Taking a few kids to the coffee shop today. Thank you. Got the new summer blend coffee. Go slow, it's gonna spill. Okay, we got the essentials. A lot of stuff going on in town today. Bye, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Be good. All right, so I just had the kids for a little bit this morning, got rid of them, uh, but I wanted to take you around town today. There's, there's a lot of good stuff going on, and I just wanna, I just wanna talk about it. So number one, I don't know if you've noticed all the businesses uh, investing in new storefronts. So down here on Market Street, check this out. Got this building looking really great. Uh, the top's already been redone over the last couple years, and then now you have this new stone going in. I don't know if you can see. Let me zoom in a little bit. Got this new stone front going on, new windows and whatnot. And then you have on this side, look at all the uh, the work going on at 700 Shop. Beautiful new storefront here as well. Some new paint. They uncovered a bunch of old stonework when they did the, did the remodel. Overall, just like super cool. And this is just like the continued transformation of Market Street. We saw a couple years ago, a lot of different buildings getting painted and getting redone. And then obviously the revamp of the courthouse. Um, all the trees going in several years ago, all of the new sidewalks. It's like Market Street is really kind of continuing this little revival. And I think when you look over you know, like a decade long period, um, it's certainly since the time that I've been in Catanning, it's a totally different place. Also have two new businesses that have gone in right here. Uh, we have uh, the, the Poor Dirty uh, Art Gallery, which looks really cool, but judging by their Facebook. And then you got the little spa that's in the old barbershop. That's two more businesses on Arch Street, and then you just turn the corner and look at what's going on at Sprinkles. They have all their facade work going on, so putting on a, a whole new front to the building. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like when it's done, but if I know uh, Ryan and the team there at Sprinkles, I'm sure it's going to be great. Now that's just some different things happen in downtown. We are also gearing up for summer to serve, and so I uh, had a couple requests of properties to go look at. Uh, Mike from Habitat sent me a list of alleyways uh, to rank and figure out uh, they're going to hopefully spend some money on paving some more alleys this week to partner with the borough. And so uh, I don't know, it's real, um, it's, it's really churning. Like this summer is going to be crazy. It's already crazy now. This summer is going to be really crazy in a good way. I know where most of the houses are in town, so those are easy to find. The alleyways are a little bit more difficult, but um, let's do the house first. Oh, I also have one more errand to run while we're out here. We still have not closed on the community garden property. It has been the most ridiculously frustrating real estate transaction of my life. And I've been involved with several ridiculously frustrating real estate transactions. This one takes the cake, but we're getting close. I haven't updated you a lot because I don't like to cover negative things. I don't like to, I don't like to make videos about things that I'm upset about. <laughs> So we're just going to stay positive and say we're almost there. We're almost to community garden time. Getting some fresh measurements there. Just trying to make sure they want to meet a double check. So um, looks like we're good on the measurements that we, you know, had all the way back in February. But who's counting? Also, we're very, very late as far as garden season goes. There are some plants started. It's very frustrating but hopefully we can still make a go of it. And no matter what, as long as we can make progress this year, next year should be really great. But I had big hopes for this year, friends. But let's, let's keep it positive. Onto the houses. Habitat had mentioned to me a yard that somebody needed help with, so we're just a few weeks away from doing yards uh, as part of Summer Serve. I was thinking maybe we wouldn't do a whole lot of yards this year, but we've been getting requests now, not just necessarily for yards that are, are properties that are abandoned, but just for people that need help. And, that, and that's pretty fun too. So um, I like doing that kind of stuff and maybe we can make a couple summer serve days out of it. But we have a really big summer serve day coming up too. Um, we'll be, I'll be doing a full on like preview of summer serve here in the next couple weeks. Uh, Kevin and I are gonna go out and start look at properties and uh, we're gonna be lining up everything. Um, we'll be finalizing everything. We have a pretty good idea what we wanna do. We know what neighborhoods we're gonna be targeting and who we're gonna be working with. Uh, but we just need to kind of shore up all the projects and get the final schedule together. 
I'm not sure what it is, but it feels like Hawthorne Avenue. It feels like you're kind of turning a corner here. Maybe it's just the springtime blooms or the nice flowers or like the dogs barking at me. I don't know. Here's the yard, not too bad at all. Basically all grass, hardly any weeds. Sound like Habitat was gonna help rebuild the steps and the handrails and the porch. We'll help the grass and it'll be, uh, it'll be looking brand new again. I like when we can find easy ones to help with. That dog does not like me, man. Does not like me at all. Last year was Wilson Avenue was like most improved uh, street in Catanning by far, not even close. So uh, shout out to Wilson Avenue. But Hawthorne, Hawthorne's primed, primed for a comeback. So if we can get a couple of the abandoned houses there filled up and uh, remodeled, Hawthorne Avenue is going to be a whole new place. All right, on to the alleyways. These are a little more difficult for me to find because I'm not super familiar with all of them. I don't normally drive down the alleyways. Mostly because a lot of the alleyways are terrible. Many of them have been redone over the last couple years, which is great, um, but there's still many to do. And I think it's really cool that Habitat kind of has that on their list. Um, some, of the, some of the grant money uh, that they got, they're trying to pour into different community projects. So not just housing, but things like the park that's going at the YMCA, uh, things like the alleyways. Um, they're considering some commercial uh, building rehabs, that kind of stuff. Looks like the first one is the alley behind our old church. So they are pretty bad. They have, they're a little, a little bit of a bumpy ride and you have a lot of missing asphalt. Kind of tough to hold the camera steady, but we'll do our best here. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but the, the hump gets to be pretty, uh, pretty good in the middle part. If you have a low riding car, you can actually scrape the bottom of it. A lot of missing asphalt that just kind of filled in with gravel over time. The video is not going to do it justice, but this is, uh, you got, it's probably at least eight to 10 inch bumps there. That one's pretty bad. Definitely not the worst one though. So um, let's go, let's see if we can find the worst one. This one kind of over by the saloon. It, it looks better overall, like just visual appeal, but it's actually a little bit worse. You see a lot of the blacktop is still intact, but there's no gravel. So when you get holes, they're like huge. Like that one is really deep down at the end. You got a huge divot here and you could like, you could like pop a tire there. Not good at all. So I think this one, will actually be a, a lower score than the other one. I mean, I think a lot of it too is like, there's no, there's never been any gravel put on this one. Like the other one looked like there was almost gravel put on it, which kind of fills in the holes. Like a very, very temporary fix, obviously, but it does help a little bit, especially on those, on the big holes. Maybe there wasn't ever gravel put on it. Maybe the asphalt is just so pulverized. Now it's, it is actually gravel. Like it just transitioned to that over time. So we give it another couple hundred years, it'll actually be sand. And then we'll be, you know, then it'll be really pliable. I don't, maybe there's some benefits to that. I don't know, I'm trying to I'm trying to see the good here, you guys. All the other ones are down in uh, what would actually be considered Wick City. So let's, uh, let's head down that way. The Wick City residents, I don't know how many messages I've had over the years telling me they are, they are the most neglected for streets and alleys. And I think, I think they're probably actually right. Glen Street here is one of the roughest uh, streetways in the borough. And then Colwell, just one block down, is actually even worse. Here's the alley. We've got just as much grass as we do gravel. Not really even a speck of asphalt that I can see, um, which is actually an improvement over the, the one we were just at. But I can see why they say they're neglected. Got some big rocks here. Maybe something that was broken up over time. Some bigger potholes here as well. Almost looks like maybe they were bricked at some point in the past. I can't really tell. I mean, aesthetically, it's uh, it's far worse than the last one. Functionally, it's a little bit better, but yeah, these all need to be redone for sure. It's almost like cobblestone at some points, <laughs> which is not a pleasure to drive on, friends. Very similar on this side as well. This one gives you a little preview of what it could look like. Coming off a of lemon way, they must have had some extra asphalt and came came up to here. They're spoiled up on Lemon Way. They got a new road there too, so, uh, you know. But Caldwell and Glen almost be ashamed to do the alleys because the alleys would then be nicer than the main roads. But then you guess you could go, you could go up and down the alleys uh, as, your <laughs> as your main thoroughfare. All joking aside, hopefully the borough can find some money to do these two little side streets at some point in the near future. And then, you know, maybe Habitat will be able to help with 
alleys over the next few years and these 10 that are on the list will will get done um, along with the street improvements new roof and awnings gotta love to see that always nice well the other three were very similar and then i found one that looked better uh, than any of the ones we've seen so far there's one i specifically had in mind that is on the list so i saved the i saved the best for last or, or in this case i saved the worst for last pretty cool to see all the veteran flags up and down the street kudos to the borough for putting that together i know it's been it's I know people have wanted to do it for a long time, and it's nice to see it actually get done. I'm giving them the drive test too through Wick City here. <laughs> These alleys down here, they are uh, they are pretty rough. I gotta admit. Um, you know, I've heard the I've heard the rumors of how bad they were, and uh, they were not exaggerated. <sighs> oh my gosh. Okay, now those were all just warm ups. This is this is the actual worst alley in Katani. It doesn't look like it, but let me show you why. There are two spots on this alley, this spot right here and this spot right here. And you're not going to be able to see it very well, but there is a huge hump in the middle. It's got to be over a foot tall. Now, if you don't recognize that when you're driving your car, uh, you can actually uh, bottom out in any regular sedan and you can actually bottom out in a minivan. Ask me how I know. This one's the same thing. It's actually a little bit deeper. You can see it's actually hiding the rest of the alley. That's how deep that divot is. This alley is worse than just an annoyance. Like this is an actual hazard. This is a liability concern. This is like a property damage claim waiting to happen. It would literally be an improvement if they just poured some gravel on this one. Like it would be much, much better. Now, of course, the best solution of all would be to pave it. But, um, but that's the worst alley in Katanning, my friends. Uh, nobody has a right to complain more than the people between Smith Street and Newbert. That's just one man's opinion, but that's my review of all the alleys in Katanning. I'm sure there's a few alleys that didn't make the list. I added one as an honorable mention behind Hawthorne that I know has been bad for a long, long time. But overall, I think we kind of underrate the value of redoing alleys. Thinking about it as I've been driving around, uh, let me explain my reasoning. So over the course of the last four years of making these videos, I've kind of become the sounding board for all of the complaints in town. <laughs> I'm not sure if they just don't get heard when they go to the city, or if they search on Facebook, Katanning, and they find the page and then they, they uh, send me messages. But, um, but overall, you know, I think most people understand that there's a lot of positive things happening. But I've gotten so many comments over the years of, of things like on the downtown, on Market Street project, people say, you know, why would you spend all that money on Market Street when there's no businesses there, when there's all these vacant buildings, blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, you should do this first. You should do this first. You should, and everyone has an opinion, okay? And um, roads are a little bit different, right? Because just bad roads, they're just annoying to drive on. They're hard on your vehicle. There's a lot of different reasons that people uh, don't like bad roads and bad alleys. But um, I wanna just take it from a little different perspective here. And it's the perspective of aesthetics. So doing the downtown Market Street project, I believe, was an extraordinarily important first step. So we have new roads downtown, we have new sidewalks, new planters, new everything, right? And we've seen, we've watched it happen over the last three years, building after building, investing in improving the facades and making it look better. Buildings being sold, buildings being now uh, rented out and occupied that were vacant for a long, long time. I'm planning to do a video here in the near future kind of showing all the vacant buildings downtown and um, kind of creating an inventory so we can track that on our website. Uh, but until I do that, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> so I've had a lot of people tell me over the years, why spend when there's empty buildings downtown, when it's not worth, basically what they're telling me is, it's not worth spending money on, it's never coming back. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I know, I know in my heart that there's this comeback coming, that all of those vacant buildings one day in the near future will be fully occupied and we're going to have a thriving downtown. It's not gonna look like it did before. Uh, it's gonna be a different kind of economy, but it is gonna be full. And it's gonna be because we did the work up front to make it more aesthetically pleasing as a town. And so then businesses will then want to come to it. 
I think that's actually the most important part about redoing alleys. Um, the alleys, when you drive around town, when you're in those alleys, especially the ones that have grass growing in the middle, it doesn't create a very inviting space. Um, but there have been alleys done, like the one that was done, uh, was it last year? In between um, Wilson Avenue and Orr Avenue. It was one of the worst alleys in town. Now it's brand new and it creates a whole different feel as you walk through the back. There's less weeds. It looks like less of a war zone. <laughs> and people might say to some of those alleys, well, look at all the houses around. Why would you invest money there? Well, what happens is when you fix that road, it creates a piece of positive momentum and you will see over time those houses began to turn around because they see a new alley there and all of a sudden the weeds that were there uh, aren't there anymore. And so the weeds in my yard, now I feel bad about them because all those other weeds are gone and I don't want mine to look like that. So it creates a peer pressure, it creates a positive momentum and over time things shift. And I know some of you out there might be thinking, well, that's not the first thing that should be done. We should be doing X, Y, and Z first. Look, I don't care what order we do them in as long as we do them. I'm all about incremental improvement and that's all I wanna see over time. So any positive changes that are happening, I'm all about it and I'm gonna cheer it on 100% and I hope you will too. In the meantime, while we're waiting for the city to do their part and for grant money to come through and all the different things that need to happen for new roads to come into existence, I just want to encourage you to get involved. Uh, Summer Serve is right around the corner, friends. June 5th and June 12th, we already have on the calendar. June 5th is going to be a uh, community cleanup day where we go around and do yards, we'll do weeds, we'll do uh, different things just to make the community look better. We try to take care of vacant houses. We try to help people who need it. And then June 12th is gonna be a huge day. We have Habitat Rock the Block in conjunction with Summer of Serve. We have Harvest Community Church on board. We have some other church members on board. We have a whole slew of people that are gonna be coming out and volunteering on that day. My hope is that we'll have 200 people working across the borough and we're going to do more work in one day on June 12th than we would normally do in an entire year of Summer of Serve. That's the goal. That's the plan. So if you're going to come on any day, come on June 12th, make plans for that. Meet at nine o'clock in the Living Water Church parking lot for that day. Uh, June 5th, it'll be a little bit before then. Um, on uh, eight o'clock is normally when we go out to uh, cut yards because we want to be done before the sun's beating down on us yet, right? We want to be done by like 11 o'clock noon so that we can uh, go and enjoy the rest of the beautiful Saturday that it will be. If you don't want to get involved with Summer of Serve, there's a multitude of other organizations who would love to have your volunteering spirit join their, join their cause. And so uh, check out any of the other organizations in town. Or if you just see that your neighbor needs some help, go help them. Let's just come together as a community. Let's continue to improve it. And let's make 2021 the best year that Katanning has ever seen. That's it for this one, you guys. Would be a great time to subscribe. We got summer serve updates coming your way. We got Armstrong Ice Cream Challenge. Right, We're like right in the midst of it. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure to go check them out. And then we have um, other videos coming up about addiction, about filling up downtown businesses, about our local elections. We might have some new government officials coming in. It's a very exciting time to be alive and it'd be a great time to get connected to this channel. Hope to see you in the next one, you guys. Have a blessed day.